There are many different ways of expressing Newton's second law. In fact, there are many ways of expressing all his laws. But this is my favourite. It's nice and concise. The overall force on an object is directly proportional to its acceleration. OK. So what does this mean? Well, we need to know exactly what we mean by acceleration. An acceleration is a change of velocity. So what do we mean by velocity? It's very important that you understand the difference between velocity and speed. Okay? Velocity has two components to it. Speed and direction. Speed is just speed, okay? But velocity, if you're traveling at a constant velocity, that means your speed is constant and your direction is constant. It means you're traveling in a straight line at constant speed. Just traveling at constant speed is not enough to qualify you as traveling at constant velocity. So, an acceleration, if you're accelerating, it means you might actually still be going at the same speed, at a constant speed, but your direction is changing. And that's very important. Okay, this is all best illustrated by the International Space Station, which is currently flying around the Earth at about 17,000 miles an hour. That's five miles a second. It's pretty quick. So, here's planet Earth. And here is the International Space Station. This is not to scale, but the International Space Station, relative to the size of the Earth, is actually very close to the surface of the Earth. It's not in a high orbit, it's, it's quite close to it. I think the height is about 200 kilometres above the surface of the Earth. Anyway, the ISS is flying around the Earth at 17,000 miles an hour, like so, and its speed, 17,000 miles an hour, is constant. It doesn't get any faster or slower. However, its direction is continuously changing. And that means it's accelerating according to Newton's second law. At that particular point where I've drawn it there, its instantaneous velocity, that means its speed and its direction, is like so. When it's at that point there, if you could somehow suddenly remove the Earth from existence in an instant, it would keep going in a straight line like that. That arrow there represents its instantaneous velocity. When it's down here, say, its instantaneous velocity it is actually the tangent to, this, to its um, path of motion. It's like that. And again, when it's over here, okay, its instantaneous velocity is there. So you can see that the direction of these arrows, they're all different. So it, it might, its speed might be constant, but its velocity is continuously changing because its direction is continuously changing. And velocity is speed plus direction. So, the overall force an object is directly proportional to its acceleration. If the ISS is constantly continuously, it's an even better word to use, accelerating, it must have an overall force on it, according to Newton's second law. And that force is due to gravity, its weight. Like any other ob massive object on or near the Earth, it's pulled towards the centre of the Earth by the Earth's gravity. And that force, 
that pink arrow there, it's the only force acting on the International Space Station. So, that, because it's the only force, it's also the overall force acting on it, which means it's constantly or continuously accelerating. And that's why its direction is continuously changing. Now, the reason it doesn't actually get any faster or slower, despite it having a continuous force on it, is because that force is exactly at 90 degrees to its velocity, to its direction of motion, okay? That angle there is a right angle, it's 90 degrees. And that's why the force doesn't affect its speed. It affects its direction, but not its speed, because it's at right angles. So, that is actually the the way circular motion works. When you have an object who's traveling at a certain speed or velocity in some direction, and it has a constant force on it at right angles to its direction of travel, it produces circular motion. When it's down here, again, its weight is pulling it towards the center of the earth again. But just like up here, its velocity, V, the line under, under it, meaning it's a vector, meaning, meaning it has direction as well as magnitude. The magnitude being the speed, the direction is the direction. Again, that's at 90 degrees and the same over there and the same at every point in its orbit. Okay. So, why doesn't the ISS crash into the Earth? If there's one force acting on it, it and it's constantly being pulled towards the centre of the Earth, why doesn't it hit the Earth? Well, the short answer is because it's travelling very, very fast sideways. Okay? If you just take an object up 200 kilometers above the center of the earth and it's not traveling at 17,000 miles an hour sideways, if you just drop it, it too will be pulled towards the center of the earth by its weight and it will just plummet and smash into the earth. But the difference is that that one doesn't have any sideways speed. The ISS does. And it's that huge speed in this direction that prevents it from crashing into the Earth. Its speed of 17,000 miles an hour is selected very carefully such that it neither spirals inwards and crashes into the Earth or spirals outwards. If it were going too fast, it would spiral outwards and try and increase the radius of its orbit. If it were traveling slightly too slow, it would spiral inwards to try to decrease the radius of its orbit. So its speed is chosen just right so that the radius of its orbit is 200 kilometers greater than the radius of the Earth. So, Newton's second law. If the overall force on an object is non-zero, if it has an overall force, that means it is accelerating, which means its velocity is changing which means it's either getting faster, it's getting slower, or it's changing direction. Okay, likewise, if the overall force on an object is zero, that means its acceleration is zero. For example, just standing on the surface of the Earth. Okay? Like me now, I'm standing here on the surface of the Earth, the overall force on me, 
I've got my weight down towards the centre of the Earth, but the Earth is pushing on me with the same reaction force upwards. So those two forces balance and my overall, important word, overall force is zero. So I'm not moving. My, in other words, my acceleration is zero. I'm not accelerating right now. So, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm going to do another video on the International Space Station because it's awesome. So, you should definitely watch that video. Let's also look at the case of a skydiver. Okay, so we have a plane, right? And the skydiver jumps out of the plane. So here he is, parachute on his back. Okay, now initially, the, the moment he jumps out, he's not falling. The, the split second he leaves the door. So there's no air resistance on him upwards, but there is his weight pulling him down. Okay, so the moment he jumps out, his overall force is equal to his weight. So he's got a big force downwards, so he starts accelerating downwards. The overall force an object is directly proportional to acceleration. Overall force is weight, so therefore its acceleration is the same, it's downwards. So he gets faster, which is, as you know, that's what would happen if you jump out of a plane. So as he gets faster, as his velocity downwards increases, okay, his weight doesn't change. The downwards force is always the same. Okay, but as he gets faster, the upwards force due to air resistance gets bigger and bigger. Okay, I call that. Um, yeah, air resistance. Okay. So, early on in his fall, the air resistance has grown, so it's slowing him up. It's decreasing his acceleration. That was sloppy use of language there. You see, the overall force is that minus that. So the overall force is that minus that, which is overall, it's about that down, right? So that's his overall force. There. So his overall force is not as big as it was here. The overall force here is that. You see the overall force down has got less because he's got an air resistance. So overall force is directly proportional to his acceleration, which means his acceleration has got less. This can be confusing. His acceleration downwards is less than it was up here. But because both arrows are down, he's still actually getting faster. Okay? Because acceleration is rate of change of velocity. And the direction hasn't changed, so in this case it's rate of change of speed. So because both arrows are down, his speed is still getting faster. He's, he's still approaching terminal velocity, getting faster and faster. It's just that he's getting faster at a slower rate than he was up here. Don't worry too much if that is confusing, okay? Let's just move on to the next one. So, the next one, he is down here. 
Okay, he's ac accelerated to the point where he's moving so fast, right? His weight hasn't changed, still the same size arrow downwards, but he's now moving so fast that the air resistance upwards, the force due to being hit in the face by the air is the same as his weight. And so the overall force, which is down minus up, is, that's right, it is zero. So, when the overall force is zero, that means it's ac his acceleration is also zero. So he eventually reaches this point where his acceleration, not his velocity, his acceleration, in other words, his change of velocity, is zero. And therefore, he keeps moving at whatever velocity he had reached at that point. And that's called terminal velocity. I think it's about 125 miles an hour for a skydiver in the star position, I think. Okay. It's actually Newton's first law, and I've got a video on that, which tells us that when the overall force is zero, you keep moving at the same velocity. But it's the second law that, tell, that tells us when the overall force is zero, its acceleration is also zero. So it kind of tells you the same thing in a different way. If his acceleration is zero, then he keeps moving at the same velocity. So the first and, law and second laws are tied together. Good. Okay. Let's see what happens when he opens his parachute. Okay, he pulls the string or whatever and his parachute deploys. Right? What's going on at that initial moment when his parachute suddenly opens? Well, the parachute creates massive air resistance. So the upwards air resistance arrow is very big. But once again, the total weight hasn't changed. It's exactly the same. So overall, we've got down minus up is equal to a big force up. So when you open the parachute, the overall force is up. So therefore, the acceleration is also up. That doesn't mean he, he moves upwards. It doesn't mean his velocity is upwards. You don't jump out of an aeroplane, open your parachute and then move upwards and then start falling again. It means your acceleration is upwards, not your velocity. If you've got an acceleration in the opposite direction to your velocity, it simply means that your velocity gets less. It means you decelerate. So he decelerates. In other words, his velocity, which is down, gets less. So he goes from moving at 125 miles an hour down, he decelerates to moving at whatever the terminal velocity of a parachute is. This is a total guess. Uh, he hit the ground what? 20 miles an hour? 10 miles an hour? Something like that. So, okay, I'm getting slightly ahead of myself. This is the first moment when he opens that parachute, okay? You get a big overall force upwards, so he decelerates. It decelerates him to his new terminal velocity, which is, okay, I'm gonna to have to draw him slightly crushed. <laughs> okay. 
So he decelerates, his velocity gets less, which means the air resistance, because he's traveling slower, gets less. His weight is still the same, still the same weight, but this deceleration slows him and slows him and slows him until he gets to the point where he's traveling so slowly that even though he's got a big parachute open, the air resistance arrow has decreased to the point where, you guessed it, the overall force, that weight minus air resistance is zero again and he reaches a new terminal velocity, okay? Overall force, zero, acceleration, zero, so constant velocity, but this time, like I said, I don't know what it is, I'm guessing about 15 miles an hour for um, 10 miles an hour maybe, for a parachute. Okay, I think that's long enough. Have I forgotten anything? Probably, but any questions, stick them in the comments, let me know, and yeah, I hope that's helped.